when you are a lovely 5D collective member, you will have the inclination to immediately say yes to all that is the emotional plane. And that is because, you know, emotions are what we rock and roll with. <laughs> and that's why self-help, personal development, and your spirituality journey continue to expand you. So open heart, unconditional love, 5D is Christ consciousness. And we have that lovely adolescent brain, but we're not adolescents that are fizzling out, okay? Because the ones who seek novelty in a way of having no secure attachment, they are fizzling out. They don't create safety because they're not safe themselves because a adaptive child pattern behavior or maladaptive is a person who has unresolved trauma. And so there's dysregulation and there's low self-esteem and passive aggressive. They don't know that healthy boundaries are active conversations. And in fact, coming in and out of the life of people. Okay, so 4D, 3D, other soul age groups potentially, we're going to put all that to the side here at IHP. We build functional adult relationships and we build the first relationship with yourself as a safe haven, secure base. And that's why you're able to then consistently through that integration, the brain desire capacity and maintaining your restorative embodiment, self aware, accountable and regulating. So you want to achieve that which your embodied brain is already seeking to achieve your optimized homeostasis state, which is actually how every person begins life is with the restorative, at least according to the attachment trauma experts that I learned from. We have other groups, 3D, 4D is what I call them. And we leave that to side for now so that we can continue our conversation. Okay, so the adolescent brain, this is from Daniel Siegel, is from the ages of 12 to 24. In fact, by the time you are a biological woman brain, 25, your executive decision-making function areas are fully developed. That's for long-term decision-making processes. And then for the man brain, uh, biological, it's 27. So remember that because it's important to know that your executive decision-making function areas are what help you to make decisions for the future. Also, we have autobiographical memory. And so if someone has those first three years with shame and they don't heal their unresolved childhood trauma and then they go on to continue becoming an adolescent, by the time they're in their adolescent, their social system comes on. They're no longer looking to their attachment system now they're looking to their peers and they want to be accepted from their peers. But they will be playing out their attachment category besides the style part stuff, but the attachment category and their mannerisms of adaptive child behavior or maladaptive child behavior. And in fact, those years, the adolescent is where people can become more hooked on the hyper fucking and the hyper drugging and the cutting and all those unhealthy self-soothing mechanisms which is why good therapists, they have a lot of different ways that they share how they look to not put teens together, for example, when it comes to if there are incidences of cutting. And so the ones who try to keep them separate from other teens, it's because there's this awareness of how peers work, you know, and so you want to make sure anytime that anyone is healing, that they have healthy self-worth, unconditionally loving, patient people around, who will be authentically there, open-hearted, reminding people of what they've decided. So obviously this is where a person, once you get older, right? I'm using this and that to integrate and get back online with our conversation. Okay, back on track. So this is the part, though, where it's very clear if an adolescent loses their way, why? And then if they don't meet healthy, self-worth human beings around them, why they won't get the opportunity to be on track until they do, which is why there is obviously opportunity. 20 years of age is how old Patrick Tiahan was, childhood trauma survivor, healed, and I always say healing, therapist, when he got into therapy and began healing and then became a therapist of his own to help others. So the 12 to 24 adolescent brain, uh, they are always active with this emotional spark so a lot of passion which makes emotions a bit hard right to to navigate that limbic system and the waves that throw you we all know about teenage years right and they also love to create genuine relationships so that's why it's very important to take note 
if any of those adolescents feel out of place because that social system is where they will fear inadequacy. So the same way they fear inadequacy already at home, if they did not get securely attached, they will fear inadequacy with peers. And that's the moment of truth where are you going to maintain your heart body and value body? And that is integrity. I stay with those basic morals. I treat you the way I want to be treated. And I stay honest. And I stay in the space of I will not affect you mentally, emotionally, or physically. I will respect another person who's alive. So I live a life of meaning and connection beyond the solo self. That's the true spirituality journey defined by those that are of spirituality in this lovely era at this point in our life. Okay, and then what else? The novelty seeking. So this is where the ones who get addicted to that release of dopamine and they're wanting intermittent reinforcement with whether it's social media or it's actual unfortunately fucking orgies drugs drinking whatever it is okay so no we don't need lucifer we have explanations and that's straightforward explanations are better than stories when it comes to why people that have maladaptive child behavior patterns are maladaptive so that we can stop stigmatizing we don't want to demonize these traits we want people to understand they have the capacity to move out of them no romanticizing just because you will have had childhood trauma doesn't mean that i have to treat you differently you're healing correctly effectively we will be grown-ups together and we will be able to chit chat so the triggers all people learn to manage their window of tolerance and then to learn of it and then to expand it that's how you're healing authentically and so we collaborate as a herd does to welcome each other okay so as you get older and the adolescents, they look up to the people who are older, but all those movies show them how to become addicted to eating ice cream when someone breaks up with you or to go drink or to go fuck or to go get distracted. So the movies are very bad examples completely. So are the documentaries, docu-series. What are they? They haven't integrated in one that I watched on demonic possession, Patrick McNamara. There's no demon possessing you. So you could change up the title, add some subtitle, I don't know, do something to interject with active, real sciences information so people can stop thinking that people get possessed by demons when there's a brain and a neuroscientist. So we need to remember we are just finding out some things in the sciences community and we have groups of 3D, 4D who disengage from sciences. They try to prove the earth is flat trying to now prove that reality doesn't exist. So we have people who are actively utilizing what is new, not social media alone, technology, and then their creativity and then their own stories and stuff like that. So I have stories too, but I am trying my best to say, okay, 5D mystics, whether you want to call them spiritual gifts or clairs, they're explained by sciences. It's your human stuff. And then, yes, the sphere of energy which is energy, intelligence, love, the essence of loving life. It doesn't have to have a name. It's around us. It's grace. It's love. It's, it's us. It's air. <laughs> okay, which is why woo-woo, spiritual lady, right here. Okay, so that being said, creative exploration. Okay, and that's the acronym of essence for the adolescent brain that Daniel Siegel gives us, which is really beautiful person who's mature when we clear our past and think of a better future with an essence brain as a grown-up we don't say i don't want to remember anything of my past we have it all with us in a bag but we're in the present in our prefrontal cortex and that means we can talk about it because there's nothing charged so clearing your past is you witnessing processing and then bringing forth the emotion from the body unconscious to the mind conscious And you, with your integrated brain, inner growth mindset, and with your Jacob personality, the neutrality and duality, say, wow, this is what I got to do today. And you keep doing that. That builds resiliency, and you continue to learn to use your social engagement system. And then you become more of a restorative embodiment self, and you're more of a functional adult. And those life partners, they're not, I think I love you, so what am I so afraid of? No, it's I love you. I know I do. And I'm not afraid, I actually am thrilled to share romance with you as long as possible, forever. Forever is something that exists for those who believe in love. 
for those who believe who do not and who believe love ends they can go get their uh stuff resolved with a good trauma therapist and then come back around as long as anyone wants to keep saying that love doesn't exist that's because they didn't get to actually put their two feet forward and hear about all of those people who got that something sacred ripped out of them because their first year of life no secure attachment and so from the adolescent mind is where we can create and when a grown-up still has that raise your hand here's our fibonacci and our infinity brains so that's amazing to have an infinite higher human conscious potential life because you experience the restorative embodiment of you you experience the integrated brain of you that's the inner and outer well-being and that's where self-help and personal development come in your whole self first of all solo self which has a core self narrative and a relational self and with that you live that true spirituality life of i live a life beyond my solo self and so we care about each other's emotions and thoughts which is what makes a life partner your amygdala is alerted i want her to smile she's crying i want him to smile he's crying i want her to not be angry him not to be angry they not to be angry we want each other to be able and be happy and fulfilled doesn't mean you don't get the other emotions no but when you have a consistent safe haven secure based body you understand that dealing with uncertainty unexpected and unwanted is actually you stress for those of us who have the adolescent brain and our whole three-year-old heart and our, that's prakriti pure energy and pure consciousness unconditional love that i got to learn from jesus and his lovely heart And so with the adults who have maintained this essence they have healthier brains more robust lives this is Daniel Siegel sharing with us they also have that emotional spark and they have have therefore passion which is really amazing <laughs> why i cuz it's not fizzling out uh they want and have connection and it doesn't have to be near because we appreciate from afar of course we want near to but what i'm saying is we don't build a relationship that is about the that is about an object and therefore we actually um are having open hearted conversations which you'll know the difference if you are in tune and aware of yourself and expanding you will know if someone shuts their heart that's called an avoidant and they in fact have like a wall so when you're far from each other they're off when they don't want to be around you they're off that's the two ways if you're not an integrated brain and you have not chosen to integrate bilaterally and i say chosen because today we have a lot of reading material so you can consistently choose to motivate yourself to be open hearted to go to therapy if you're having a trouble with it okay the other spectrum is chaos and chaos is something different so when chaos comes around you learn to give them clear this is when i'm available this is not and you organize it so that they can understand that this is where you can be here but you cannot self you cannot regulate their self for them and that in time also with a secure connection you build a uh consistency So uh courage for novelty uh we have novelty seeking when we have this lovely adolescent brain as adults but not in a way of catch me if you can it's in a way of having passion for that which you do and then creatively as an online entrepreneur and content creator it's amazing what i see when i see successful human beings out there creating the human evolution people they're all amazing the ones who dismantle we thank every single brain out there because any piece of information will add for those of us who are novelty seekers and then we create new things and that's because of again the imagination and our neuroplastic agent is all the same but ours uses expansion the ones who use nightmares and monsters well they're in a whole different loop and as for life partners they come in and they say that's what a life partner is whether it's romantic or not we build secure connections and secure relationships because that's what functional adults do we don't do the cusco thing and cusco remember with the pacha he decides i want to live with you pacha <laughs> He just doesn't know how to tell Pacha the truth, but Pacha allows himself to put up with that. And I'm sure Cusco eventually, in real life, anyone who chooses to be and meet and be with any one of us who is a whole person, they will move into something more in time. They could stay Cuscos as well. 
that is to be continued. In the meantime, life partners care about each other's differentiated self, and so we all become a mui. And that's Daniel Siegel's term, mui. M E, me, and you, and mui, because I'm a guitar string, you're a guitar string, and I don't have my left mode talking over you when you're telling me your thoughts and emotions when uncertainty, unexpected, and unwanted arise. And I don't have my heart closed, I have it open, and I'm not offline meaning disrupted. I'm in flow. And that's because I'm paying full attention to you. And I'm appreciating you. And I'm connecting. And I'm building. Therefore, I forget the word that Daniel Siegel, I think entrainment or something like that. But I noticed that some people in our 4D community want to use that word to change up again how our oversoul is. And on that note, I'm going to make an episode where I focus on our 5D mystic relationships. But thank you for tuning in to this one. Again, hopefully that clearing of the past is in a way for all of you that has embraced more love. If not, there are ways for you to do that. We talk all about it. Again, self-help, personal development, emotions are not laundry. You practice welcoming them, thinking in an inner growth way, expanding, and then knowing that we all deal with uncertainty, unwanted, and unknowns. Emotions are not torture unless you're in your limbic system and in the temporal junction and therefore ruminating. And there's a very good video from Tara Brock that helps people to get back online with their prefrontal cortex. And people who need a little extra help for personality disorders, there's Dr. Daniel Fox. For childhood trauma, there's Patrick T. Ann. They're online and they offer a lot of free content. Dr. Daniel Siegel, he's also great, but he's not, I think, on YouTube as much, but he's still great. His recent course on Consciousness and change is very simple, and some of it is proven stuff. Others are him connecting dots, but it's still really great for any of you who are interested in that change and consciousness in a way of their clearing that past and learning how to work with emotions and thoughts in Daniel Siegel's way, Dr. Dan. It's mindsightinstitute.com. Look up Dr. Daniel Siegel. If you can't find it, reach out to me by email, and um, that's about it for now. Thank you for stopping by, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll be back with more.